welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I wanted to talk about fashion trend analysis. As far as my channel goes, I think I'm going to be shifting into multiple industries of the fashion industry and not just focus on merchandising. A lot of the comments and DMs I get from you guys um, are asking to explore more fields of the fashion industry. So today's video, we're going to be talking about fashion trend analysis. I've talked about this briefly before, I believe, in a couple of my other videos, and I've definitely written about it in my merchandising guide. So link in the description box if you want to check those out. Um, but fashion trend analysis, trend forecasting, things like that. I always put a lot of emphasis on trend forecasting and paying attention to trends in merchandising because that has a lot to do with your job as a merchandiser. Are you knowledgeable of what's going on in the fashion industry and the world in order to create relevant displays that are going to grab customers' attention, right? So if there's a certain trend that's going on, um, which we're going to talk about some trends too that were really big in 2020. Um, it's really important to focus on those to be able to relate to customers because customers want to feel like they're understood and they want to find a brand that is relatable. So fashion trend analysis or trend forecasting is a field that revolves around predicting the future of a market. So what does this trend forecaster do? Trend forecasters work in every industry using data from past sales to anticipate future opportunities. Fashion forecasters produce trend reports that product developers use to create new clothes and accessories for brands. So, how can they tell what um, is going to be a trend? Maybe it's something that's like a daring new accessory and it's been coming up a lot more like on the runways or on the, on the street fashion side. Some examples of some trends, bell-bottom jeans, mini skirts from the 60s, tie-dye patterns, which were really big in 2020 because when a lot of us were quarantined, we started like doing craftier things at home and we made like tie-dye shirts. So let's dive in a little deeper. A fashion trend analyst looks for information about apparel design. Duties focus on predicting trends based on current consumer data, market research, and knowledge of the fashion industry. You also use information about marketing plans, retail industry sales, and pop culture trends in your analysis. So I feel like one reason, um, one thing that comes to mind with trend forecasting, especially right now, is TikTok, right? A lot of, a lot of us use that app. There's a ton of different videos out there on TikTok, different niches, different categories. But if you look at fashion and look at beauty, there's a lot of people that are recommending products or telling you what products to stay away from. They're teaching you cool things like tricks to do, little hacks that make your life easier, what clothes are in. You'll start to see more of like a style or trend on TikTok and people kind of start to replicate that in real life. So I feel like TikTok is kind of like a really good social leader. If you look at Instagram with bloggers and influencers, they have started to become kind of trendsetters as well. And I feel like that's something that has become more popularized maybe in the past like five to 10 years or so. Bloggers didn't always lead the fashion industry as much as they do now. People turn to influencers a lot more than they depend on actual models and celebrities. I feel like celebrities really used to have the hold and say of like what was going to be popular, but that's not so much uh, the case anymore. In my merchandising guide, I've mentioned how one of the first fashion classes I took when I still lived in California was a fashion or a, um, a trend forecasting class. And I found it to be really, really interesting because I feel like a lot of the fashion industry um, isn't taken as seriously from outsiders as it should be. Once you're in the industry, you know how unbelievably competitive it is and how serious um, the littlest details can be. But it's really crazy just to see, you know, how on top of everything these experts really have to be when they're forecasting trends and things like that because it's going to make or break even retail sales if Target releases this uh, line of clothing that they thought would be popular and it's not, then that store is gonna lose money. So it's all kind of like an equation. All factors add up into it. Everyone needs to be doing their job properly and really paying attention. And I feel like that's kind of a blessing with social media is like that's a really good way to stay on top of everything and really be able to pay attention on what's going on right now because things change in an instant. Um, and it's really hard to stay on top of fashion, let alone predict the future of fashion because things are changing constantly and there's always new and innovative ways on how um, things are going to be designed and worn. So fashion trends in 2019 and 2020, what were the biggest ones? It includes oversized hats, if you look at bucket hats, how many people were buying those, uh, bamboo bags, shell jewelry, and embellished belts. Tie-dye patterns were really big, sequins, fringes, and puffed sleeves. Those are going to be in trend as predicted. They are predicting 
that tie-dye trend patterns are going to continue to be very popular as well as sequins, fringes, and puff sleeves are going to be in trend in the next coming year or two. Um, I think it is really interesting to just kind of see how fashion progresses and I think a lot of the times it's really interesting too because again if you look at TikTok or if you look at some of these things that influencers are wearing from the past couple of years or so it's like fashion does repeat itself like I always say history repeats itself a lot of these things have very strong 90s influences you look at it and you're like wow that's really 90s like when really baggy mom jeans came back and then you have the bucket hats you have chokers you have tie-dye shirts you have crop tops you have all these different elements that used to be popular like 20 30 years ago so it's interesting how they'll kind of come back but with a new twist um so fashion trend analysis uh i think is really interesting if you're able to take a course of it at your local community college or wherever I would highly recommend it um, I liked mine a lot I thought it was really fun I'm lucky that they offered that because I know sometimes with curriculums they don't always offer like fashion and those kind of related fields but I think I'm gonna be doing a video later on talking about um, where I've been able to find really decent like or free online courses like trusted sites that I really like um, I'm still kind of experimenting with a few and seeing you know really how I feel about them but I think that's gonna be a really great video too because once we cover other um, fields of the fashion industry then I'll be able to say hey if you're not able to go to school here's where you can go online to find these legitimate courses and take them in the comfort of your own home while you're in lockdown in your spare time or whatever so I hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe for more as so we're gonna dive deeper into the fashion industry and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.